Hello and welcome to the getting started video of Databrain's inventory add-on. In this video we are gonna have a look at all inventory related data and how we can set up a runtime inventory. Let's start right away. First let's have a look at the data structure of the inventory add-on. For this I'm gonna open up a data library where I've already added some data to it. You can create a new empty data library in your project by right clicking in the project view and select Create Databrain New Data Library. Alright, so first we have here the inventories. This is where you create your player inventory, your player equipment, but also the merchant inventory and any other generic inventory container. As you can see in the properties here, you can set the inventory type and if you like you can also set if this inventory should be populated by a loot table. Additionally, you can also set the generation rule for this. Next, in the inventory foldout, you can set the actual inventory slots. You can leave this blank if the inventory is being generated by a loot table. The events foldout shows you all relevant inventory events. And if you have the logic add-on, you can also find the logic foldout here, which allows you to connect logic graphs to inventory events. Those graphs are then being executed on the events. This is quite cool, as it lets you create some nice data logics. So for example, let me just quickly add a graph on the onInventoryItemAdded event here. Now what I can do here is, I can add the HasItem node, which comes with the inventory add-on, and then do a check for a specific item in the player's inventory. If the item is available, I can then execute further code, such as changing a player's stats value for example. So you see? The logic add-on comes in here quite handy. Now let's go back to our data structure. Next we have here the slots IDs. This is where you can define the IDs for the equipment inventory slots. Those IDs can then be assigned to the items if they are equipable. So for example, we have here 5 IDs for our left and right hands as well as left and right foots and the head. Now on an item such as a weapon, you can then set the IDs to the left and right hands. Next we have our actual items. An item has quite a lot of properties, such as the actual item prefab, or if you are using the Unity addressables package, you can also enable support for assigning an asset reference instead. Then we have item values, based on our coins and the money data, rarity category, if an item is consumable, equipable, as well as stackable. On the equipable slots, you can define the slots IDs, which we saw before. Currently, all items are under the items foldout. But thanks to how Databrain works, you could easily create different item categories by creating a new script and derive from item data, like in this example here. You see, I have created a new script named food. Now after compilation, there is now a new category in the Databrain editor called food. Awesome! Next we have the blueprint items. These items are very similar to a normal item, with the only difference of having an additional blueprint foldout where you can define the blueprint. Here you can set the required items as well as the generated item when crafting. Inside of the items category we have the rarities data type. This is basically a category type which can be assigned to an item. Next we have our money or resources. Here you can basically define your different coins, such as gold and silver, for example. These coins can be also set to an item to define its value. The inventory also supports subcoins. So for example here I have defined the conversion amount of 1 gold equals 10 silver and 100 copper. This is of course all optional. Next we have our loot tables, where you can define how items should be dropped or generated at runtime. These loot tables can also be assigned to an inventory to populate it with random items. Creating a new loot table is simple. Let's quickly have a look. Click on create. Now let's add a new item. We can now choose the drop type from a single item, a random from a list of items or random from a rarity category. Next we have the drop weight possibility and quantity type. With all of these combined, you can easily create loot tables of different kinds. 
So we now had a closer look on the data structure of the inventory add-on. Now let's see how we can implement an actual inventory in your game. There are two possible ways to do this. The first way would be to simply create all the inventory UI from scratch and using the appropriate inventory UI components. The other and much simpler way would be to drag and drop the inventory system prefab. Let's start with the simpler method. Navigate to the Inventory Runtime Prefabs folder. Duplicate this folder to make sure not changing the original prefabs. Now drop the Inventory System Prefab to your scene. Inside of this prefab you can find two UI controller scripts. The Inventory UI controller and the Crafting UI controller. Both are singletons which we will access to build and display our inventory. Then we have the Inventory Input System which handles gamepad controller inputs and the UI canvas which contains all the inventory UI. To make sure the UI receives input events, we need to add a Unity UI event system. Simply right click in the hierarchy and select UI event system. Great! Now let's create a very simple demo script which will open and build the UI inventory. Let's call it test inventory. Here I'm gonna add some simple IAM GUI buttons which will open our player inventory. Let's add the references we need. So in order to open the inventory we need the actual inventory data, in our case the player inventory and the actual UI object where the items will be shown. So let's add those two references to our script. I'm also gonna add a data object dropdown attribute to easily select the player inventory data in the inspector. Now on our I'm GUI button, we're gonna simply add following code. First we set the UI object's active state to true. Then we use the inventory UI control singleton to build the inventory like this. Here we pass the player inventory data and the player inventory UI object. Alright, let's wait for compilation. Now create a new game object in the scene and drag the test inventory script onto it. Let's assign the data library from the demo scene so we can quickly test if everything is working. Select the player inventory from the dropdown and assign the player inventory UI root object from the canvas. As you can see, this item has an inventory UI root component assigned, so this is exactly what we need to pass to our inventory UI controller. Drag it onto our test inventory script. Great, that's it. We can now hit play and open the player inventory. Let's try it out. Click on the IAM GUI button in the corner. As you can see, the inventory opens up and we can already drag and drop items. Let's add the merchant inventory and crafting as well. Let's create three methods where we are gonna add the appropriate code. So we have one method which opens the player inventory one for the merchant inventory and one for the crafting UI. So this is now the final script. Let's try it out. As you can see, 
If we open up the merchant inventory, we can already buy and sell items. Awesome! Let's try out the crafting. Great, this works as well. So now let's have a look at how we can build a simple inventory from scratch, without using the inventory system prefab. Let's create a new scene. First add an image. This will be the main player inventory window. Inside of it add another image, which will contain the items in a grid. Add a grid layout group of components to it. I'm gonna quickly add the item slot prefabs to test the grid layout. Great! Let's add the inventory grid component to our grid image and the inventory UI root component to the player inventory object. Now this basic setup would already work, but let's add a description panel as well. Add a second UI image to the player inventory and put it next to the grid. Next, add the inventory description component to it. As you can see, this component needs an icon and a text. Let's add these two objects to the description panel. Assign them to the inventory description component. Alright, next step is to add our inventory UI controller and assign all necessary references to it. Create a new game object and add the inventory UI controller script. Add the data library from the demo. Then add additional prefabs. Those are prefabs which are being instantiated at runtime. Let's simply add the prefabs from the inventory runtime prefabs folder for this example. Perfect, now that's basically it. Let's try it with our test inventory script. Just assign your required references to the test inventory script. Hit play and see if everything is working. Great! We can now drag items and see the description of the items. Now from here on you could duplicate the player inventory game object and create another one for the merchant inventory for example. For more detailed information, please have a look at the demo scene or documentation available at databrain.cc. Bye!